Today's lesson is on arithmetic sequences and series. And if you recall, in the last lesson, we learned that a sequence is just a set of terms, a set of numbers, and it becomes a series when we decide to add the terms in that sequence. So today we're going to see what is it that gives us an arithmetic sequence. Well, it's a sequence whose consecutive terms have a constant difference. Constant difference, which we denote with a D. So let's look at these sequences that we have here and decide whether they're arithmetic or not. So what we want to do is we want to take A2 and subtract A1. We want to take A3 and subtract A2 and so forth and see if the number, the difference, is always the same. So when we subtract 4 from 7, we get 3. When we subtract 7 from 10, we get 3. And we can see if we continue on with this that we do have a common difference, a constant difference, which is 3. And then it says write the next term. So, of course, what we're doing is actually going up by 3 every time. So our next term, which will be 3, 4, 5, A, sub 6, it's going to be 19. All right, so let's do one more of these. We don't have to necessarily do all of them. Well, this one's easy because I can see quickly. A sub 2 minus A sub 1 is 3. A sub 3 minus A sub 2 is 6. So right there, I can see that I do not have an arithmetic sequence. All right, let's look at this one. Oh, dear, fractions. So 5 fourths minus 4 fourths is 1 fourth. 3 halves minus 5 fourths, well that's 6 fourths, right? 6 fourths minus 5 fourths is 1 fourth. So, and I can see 7 fourths minus 6 fourths is a fourth. So yeah, I got a constant difference, which is a fourth. So now to get the next term, a sub 5, what I got to do is add a fourth to 7 fourths, and of course that'll be 8 fourths, which is 2. All right, you're going to like this because I have a formula that will enable me to find the nth term. You remember in last lesson, we had to, we had to look at the term's place in the sequence, and we had to try to figure out for ourselves without a formula how to find the rule to find any term, unless, of course, we had a recursive rule. Just a quick reminder, a recursive rule... A recursive rule, you have to know the previous term because each term's place, the value of each term depends on the term before it. And with the other type, not recursive, you remember those were called explicit rules. And the explicit rules we got by determining the term's place in the sequence. So with the explicit rules, we could find a sub n without knowing all the previous terms. All right, so if we've got an arithmetic sequence, here is the formula we're going to use right here to find the nth term. So let's look at a couple of these examples. It says write an explicit formula for the nth term, then find the 20th term. So first we got to decide whether these are all arithmetic or not. I'm going to assume they are, but let's uh, verify that. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is going to be negative 2. And so, yes, so this is definitely arithmetic with a constant difference of negative 2. So let's come up here and get our formula. So the nth term is going to be the first term, which is 2, plus, I'm going to put my d first here, negative 2 times n minus 1. All right, so let's simplify this part here. So we got 2 and then negative 2n plus 2. So a sub n is going to be negative 2n plus 4. All right, so there's our rule. There's our explicit rule. Why is it explicit? Because I don't need the previous terms to decide what the 20th term or any other term in the sequence is. Or, yeah. So. All right, trying to find the 20th term, so we're just going to plug in 20 for n. So I got negative 2 times 20 plus 4. So negative 40 plus 4 is going to be negative 36. All right, simple as that. 
just plug the numbers into my formula. So let's look at the second one here. Let's see, is it arithmetic first? 11 halves minus 1 half is 10 halves, so that's going to give me 5. 21 halves minus 11 halves, 10 halves, which is 5. 10 halves, so yeah, so this is arithmetic. I've got a constant difference of 5. So a sub n is going to be the first term, 1 half, plus the constant difference, 5, times n minus 1. So if we simplify this, we have a half plus 5n minus 5. So let's see what that's going to come out to be. 5n minus 4 and a half. Well, we're going to write that as an improper fraction. So that's going to be minus 9 halves. So there's our formula for a sub n. And if we want to find the 20th term, a sub 20 is 5 times 20 minus 9 halves, which is 100 minus 9 halves. So 200 halves minus 9 halves is going to be... 200, this 100 is 200 halves minus 9 halves, so that'll be 191 halves. And we do want to leave it in this form, guys, because as you can see, our other terms in this sequence are fractions. So we want to leave our answer, our 20th term, as a fraction also. All right, number 6 here. I already know that it's arithmetic because the D is given, the constant difference. So this one is going to be easy to do. I'm going to leave this for you. And the A sub N, I will give you the answer. You should pause and work this one and know that the rule, the formula for the nth term is 4N minus 7. And the 20th term will be 4 times 20 minus 7. <clears throat> excuse me, 80 minus 7, which is 73. All right, so we have the constant difference here. We have the first term here. So I, once again, I'm going to save this one for you to work. The solution is a sub n is negative 7n plus 13 halves. So therefore, the 20th term is going to be negative 267 halves. Please pause the video and work that for extra practice. All right, we'll do number eight here because it's a little different. I have the seventh term. I don't know what a sub one is. So look back up here at my formula. I need to know what the first term is. I've got a sub n is a sub one plus d times n minus one. And by the way, guys, you will be given this formula on the you'll have a formula sheet when you take the SOL test. So you don't necessarily need to keep it in your long-term memory. However, you won't have a formula sheet for our test. And I promise you, if you work these problems, just a few of them, and write this formula down a few times, you'll remember it. So how are we going to get a sub 1 here? Well, let's start with a sub 7. We've got a sub 7. We know it equals 16. So 16 is a sub 1. They've given us the difference, which is 4. So let's plug in that, and then we can figure out what a sub 1 is. So we've got 16 equals, oh, and I also know n here, right? If I'm using a sub 7, then I should plug 7 in right there for n. So I've got a sub 1 plus 4 times 6. So a sub 1 is going to be 16 minus 24, which is negative 8. All right, so now I've got a sub 1. I've got the difference, so I can find the rule for a sub n. Negative 8 plus 4 times n minus 1. Negative 8 plus 4n minus 4. So a sub n is 4n minus 12. And then if I want to find a sub 20, I just plug 20 in there and I get 80 minus 12, which is 68. All right. 
The recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence is also going to be on the formula sheet, but you need to know it for the time being. The general form for the recursive rule would be simply this, that a sub n is the previous term plus whatever the constant difference is. So if I wanted, let's say, a sub 18 here, then I would take a sub 17 and add whatever the difference is. So once again, when you're using a recursive rule, you got to know all the previous terms. All right, to find an arithmetic mean, well, we know the mean is simply the average of two numbers. So all we got to do here is find the average. If I'm given a sequence, given a sequence here, and I want to find the missing term, I just look what's going to come between, what's the average of 23 and 49? So 2, that's 72. So if I divide that by 2, then I get 36. So if 36 goes in there, then it's easy for me to figure out what the constant difference is. What's the constant difference? 7. All right, let's do one more. I don't think we need to do all these. If I got 33 and 29 and I'm trying to find the number in the sequence between those, I got 62 for the sum, divide that by 2, I get 31. So if I were to ask you what the constant difference is, D, of course, would be 2. All right, and for this one, I can see that if I add them, 32 divided by 2 gives me 16. So, no, that's not right. Whoops, 42. 28 plus 14 is 42 divided by 2. So that would mean 21 is the term in between, and that would mean my difference is 7 for that arithmetic sequence. Okay, well, how about if I have this in the form of a recursive rule? I got a recursive rule here, right, guys? So, so if it's given to me in this format, I know that 5 is the previous term. So, a, so basically what I have here is a sub n minus 1. Here's a sub n. That's the one we're looking for. And a sub n plus 1 is 11, so I'm going to do this just the same now, right? So find the average of these two numbers. 11 plus 5 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8, and that would mean my difference is 3. All right, same situation here. I've got 17, and then I've got a sub n. That's what I'm looking for. This one is 3, so if I add these two, I get 20. And 20 divided by 2 is 10. So I got my 10 there. What is my difference here? Not 7, is it? It's negative 7. Difference is negative 7 because, remember, I take this term and subtract this term from it, and that gives me a constant difference of negative 7. All right? You should pause here and work number 14, and what you'll find is that the term in between these two of course, is negative 8.5. Okay, let's see what we got here. The terms, oh, these terms aren't side by side. Look what we have here. We've got a sub 4, which is 16. We've got a sub 13, which is 43. So how are we going to find, well, we need a sub 1, right? And we need d. We don't have a sub 1 or d, so let's see how we're going to find that out. Why don't we take a sub 13 and subtract a sub 4? So 43 minus 16, that's going to give me 27, right? 27. And I know that I've got nine, nine terms in between here, so if I divide this by 9, I'm going to get 3, right? So that 3 there is my d. Because if I add 3, add 3 to 16, I'll get 19, 22, 25, all the way up to the 13th term, which is 43. So this is going to help me. Now that I know D, I can easily find my first term, right? 
to subtract 3 from each of these. So 16, 13, 10, and 7. So it looks like a sub 1 is going to be 7. Therefore, I can now find the rule for the nth term. a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1 equals 3n, 7 minus 3 is plus 4, so there's my rule for a sub n. Now I can find any term I want to in that sequence. All right, here's another one for you. Please pause the video and work this one just as I did number 15, and what you will find is that 20 minus 8 is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that 4 is my constant difference there. a sub 1, so if a sub 4 is 8, then a sub 3 is going to be 4, a sub 2 is going to be 0, and a sub 1 is going to be negative 4. Now I can get my rule, it's negative 4 plus d, which is 4, times n minus 1. So the rule for a sub n is 4n, and I got negative 4 minus 4, so minus 8. All right, we're going to start another video with arithmetic sequences in just a moment. Stay tuned.